parts of the world, people work so much. And not only that, we also worry during the every month. How many of you? End of the month, only, only, only army and me. <laughs> we worry so much because there's a lot of things to consider. We have to pay for our bills, mortgages. We worry so much. You know, initial reaction to this kind of news, but listening to the news, what's happening, what's going on to, the, uh, to Egypt and other parts of the world, you know, it comes to my mind the word, the letter W. You know what the letter W stands? Worry. We worry so much because of what is happening, because of what we're facing right now. So how many of you here are in that kind of situation? Maybe some of you are, you worry so much because of what is going on. Let's be honest, we're all prone to worry about our jobs. All of us are susceptible to worry what is going on, what about... Oh, what's this? <laughs> I need to worry now, I have the reason to worry. No worry. <laughs> it's working? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Even our children's future, we worry so much. What's going on? What's happening? Worry affects each and every one of us, but instead of worry, reigning over our life, over, over our hearts, my prayer for today is to overcome worry. Tell the person beside you, my prayer for, for you today is to overcome worry. Amen? That's why my message for today is all about winning over worry. The word wow. It's good to hear the word wow. Every time I hear that word wow, you're so excited. So today, God wants you to think that wow. Then the person is like wow. You know what I'm saying? You're excited? Wow. Amen? Because of what God is going to do? Say Lord wow. Meaning say God will declare victory in your situation, in every situation we are facing right now. Amen? Amen. So say, Lord, wow! Because of what you're going to do, Lord, God, in my life. Amen. I'm so excited, Lord. Wow, Lord. For your presence, Lord, wow! For your promises, wow! Amen. For everything. Amen. The other person beside you, wow, you're so beautiful. Remember that word wow. Wow. Is that word? Wow. Wow. It's a problem with this word. Wow. Wow. So wow. Winning. Winning over word. Maybe some of you are in a kind of situation just few weeks ago the devil is trying to inculcate in my mind to worry so much. The situation, the condition of everything, trying to stop me and uh, you know, worry sometimes will uh, hinder you to keep on keeping on. That's the work of the enemy. But we thank God because we are in a winning side. Amen? Amen. God is with us. We have assured that victory is with, with the Lord. Amen. And we can overcome worry. So maybe some of you are in a kind of situation but God is telling you, you can win over your worry today. Amen? Amen. So Amen. I say, wow Lord, I'm so excited. Amen? Amen. I'm so excited Lord for what you're going to accomplish. And I believe I can win what I'm facing right now. Amen? Amen. Winning over victory. That's why my prayer for today is to overcome worry by the help and by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to know, here's the thing about worry. According to psychology research, 
is the Middle East. The 40% of our worries are about events that will never happen. 40%. And the 30% of our worries are about events that have already happened. And still, we worry about it. 22% of our words are about trivia, meaning to say an important, insignificant events. And then 4% of our words are about events we cannot change. You have to change in any part because you cannot change your situation. It's a matter of your attitude towards your situation. You cannot change any situation. But you have to ask the Lord to change you and accept what you're facing right now and adjust on what you're facing right now. 4% of our worries are about the real events on which we can act. Just only 4%. So 40% of our worries are about events that will never happen. 30% of our worries are about events that have already happened. 22% of our worries are about unimportant, insignificant events. So today, God is telling us today, you can win over your worry. Amen. Tell the person beside you, you can overcome your worry today by the help and by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe God has a solution for every worry we are facing right now. Amen. Amen. God has a cure. God has an antidote for every worry we are facing right now. Well, we cannot deny the fact as human beings, we are facing all this stuff, all these things, because we're still in this world, facing a lot of problems, pressure, stress. But the good thing is, God has an antidote. God has a cure. Amen? God has a solution for every problem. If there's a problem, there's a solution. Amen? For every problem, there is a solution. There's a cure. Amen. So if you have a problem with worry, God is telling you, hey, I have a solution for that. Can you say amen? Amen. And I'd like to read to you the, the, the text. It's all about Psalm 29. Can you turn your Bible with me to Psalm 23? This is the passage that I would like to uh, focus it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He gives me green pastures to lie in. He leads me by calm pools of water. He restores my strength. He leads me on right paths to show that He is good. Even if I walk through a body as dark as the grave, I will not be afraid of any danger because you are with me. You rather right stop comfort me. You prepare a meal for me in front of my enemies. You welcome me as an honored guest. My cup is full and spilling over. Your goodness, the Bible says, and mercy will be with me all my life. And I will live in the Lord's house a long, long time. Can we declare together, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Tell the person beside you, make the Lord your shepherd. Make the Lord your shepherd. I have three points for today. For us to win worry, to overcome worry. But first let us talk about the problem with worry. There are two major problems with worry. It's not helpful. That's a problem. Worry cannot help you. Let's talk about the problem. That worry it's not helpful. It will not help you. When you worry so much, it's unhelpful because it never accomplishes anything. It never solves anything. When you worry, it will never solve any problem. Never accomplishes anything. It never solves anything. When you worry so much, it will not help you. That's the problem of worry. When we focus so much on worry instead of the Lord, it will not help you. 
So that's the problem. When you walk and live in a tiny situation, you always worry. Instead of putting your trust in the Lord, worry will not help you. I remember one time, a man once said to his friend, he said, I'm really in trouble. I have a mountain of credit card debt. I lost my job, he said. My car is being repossessed and my house is in poor luxury. But I'm not worried about it. And then his friend said, how can it be? I asked his friend, well, he said, I have hired a professional warrior. And he does all my worrying for me, said the man. His friend replied, that's fantastic, that's awesome. And he said, how much does a professional warrior cost? And this guy said, well, $50,000 a year. I'm giving him $50,000 a year. Whoa! And his friend said, that's expensive. What are you going to get that kind of money? And then the man replied, oh, I don't know. I don't know. But that's for him to worry about. <laughs> that's for him to worry about. Maybe you can have me, maybe you can tell the person beside you. Can I hire you for today? Are you a professional warrior? Can I hire you? Who among you here are professional warrior? All of us. Many times. We worry so much. But we thank God. Amen. We thank God. God is always there. Who's always with us, willing to help us and extend help and grace. Amen. Guys, when you worry, it will not help you. Worry will not help us. It will not solve any problem. When we focus so much on worry, it will not help us. That's why, why don't we focus on the Lord and say, Lord, yes, I'm facing all these things, but I'm going to focus on you, Lord God, because help comes from, from the Lord. And not only that, the problem of worry, it's not healthy. A lot of people, in fact, a lot of doctors say, because of, uh, we have ulcers, insomnia, what else, bad aches, headaches, because of stress and worry. We worry so much, but the Lord is reminding us today we need not make to worry. Amen? God makes us to put our trust in the Lord. That's the problem of worry. When we worry so much, it's not helpful, it will not help you. It's unhealthy. A lot of people, I talked to them, in fact, one day, I think Friday, I was able to talk to one, one, one sister and said, Pastor, I have a problem with my back ache. I have a problem with my, with my headache. And you know, sometimes when we worry so much, that's the result. And this is the, this is what the doctor says, physician says, we get ulcers, backaches, headaches, because of stress and worry. When we worry so much, these are the manifestations. It will not help you. It's unhealthy. Knowing it's not helpful, knowing it's not help, healthy, why don't we just Ask the Lord to help us to solve the problem. What's the problem of worry? How many of you are facing that kind of situation like right now? <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> That's why the message for me. That's why I thank you, Lord God. It speak first to me. The Lord reminding me today, hey. You have to put your trust in the Lord. Amen. That's the good thing. We're facing uh, problems, worry, we work so much, but the Lord's reminding us that's a problem when you put so much on when you focus on your situation. It's not helpful, it's not healthy. You need to apply the truth of the word of God. Amen. But the good thing is, God has given us a solution. God has given us the principle that we have to apply. So that we could overcome, to win, over worry. Amen? And what is the principle? And I'd like to focus on this. The principle that we have to apply so that we can win over worry. What is the solution to worry? The scripture says in Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd. I'd like to focus on one verse. This is the series of, this is the series of messages. Psalm 23 with six verses. But I'd like to focus first on 1 
first verse. The Lord is my shepherd. If you are facing worry, you should apply the principle of the truth of the word of God. And the truth is, the Lord is my shepherd. Make the Lord your shepherd. Amen? He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Amen. Guys, we have to apply the principle of the word of God. If you are in a kind of situation, you're facing worry, you worry so much, the principle of the word of God says, the Lord is my shepherd. In other words, if you want to find solution in your situation, make the Lord your shepherd. Amen? That's the principle. Meaning to say, we have to trust that God will take care of you. Then the person beside you, the Lord will take care of you. The Lord will take care of your family. The Lord will take care of your work. The Lord That's why we need the Lord. Amen. That's the principle that we have to apply. For us to win over worry, we have to apply the principle to the God that we should put our trust in the Lord. Trust that God will take care of you. And I believe, knowing that God is going to take care of me, I'm not going to worry. Guys, knowing that God is taking care of you, God Almighty, the creator of everything, the giver of life, the giver of strength, who sustain you, who sustain us, the one who's taking care of us. Well, we try our best, you know, as an individual, brother and sister, there's some problems, there's some needs, you try to extend help. But we are limited people. But the good thing is the Lord is making a promise when we apply the principle of the word, if you're facing the kind of situation that says, trust that God will take care of you. Where is your trust today? Do you put your trust in the one who will take care of you? The reason why we worry so much because sometimes, and oftentimes or maybe many times, we forget to Put our trust in the Lord. But the Lord is telling us, hey, this is the principle that you have to apply. You have to put your trust in me. Trust that God will take care of you. David declared, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything. David said, The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Guys, if we let the Lord be our shepherd, there is a solution to worry. When we put God a shepherd who will take care of everything, we don't have to worry. Amen. Knowing that God is a shepherd, knowing that God We don't have to worry. But the question is, is the Lord our shepherd? David claimed and declared today, the Lord is my shepherd. We have to know what shepherds do. You know, we thank God we have a great shepherd. All of us are under shepherd. You have a, as, 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 I'm, as, as a shepherd, God has entrusted to me you. As the flocks, as the shepherd of this local church, but we are the great shepherd. All of us here are under shepherd. And the Bible says, make the Lord your shepherd. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Therefore he said, I have everything I need. When I put my trust in the Lord as my shepherd, I have everything I need. That's what David declared. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. 
mean? We have to know what shepherds do. A shepherd provides. He is our provider. When we put our trust in the Lord as our shepherd, God will prove himself that he is our shepherd who can provide. The shep our shepherd, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, a shepherd provides. Do you, do you believe that God can provide all your needs? God has proven himself many, many times that indeed he is our Jehovah Jireh. As being our shepherd, he can provide. Provision comes from our shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah. God is our provider. And we thank God. The Lord proved himself to me and my family and the rest of us who are here. Because we make the Lord our shepherd, the shepherd provides. Amen? Amen. What else? A shepherd protects. He defends against enemies. A shepherd protects us from dangers. A shepherd protects us from the work of the enemy. Because God is our shepherd. How many wants, wants protection? All of us. Just imagine every day, every single day, from house to work, from work to house, every single day, we experience God's protection. Because you make the Lord your shepherd. We have to know what shepherds do. A shepherd protects and defends us from the words of the enemy. Not only that, a shepherd guides you, guides us. From the paths of righteousness. Amen? He leads us into the paths of righteousness. He walks with us. He walks with me. Wow! Knowing that God guides us. You know without God's guidance, where are we at now? And we thank God every day. The Lord leads us. The Lord guides us. Even in making some decisions. We thank God because the Lord guides us. Amen? In making some simple decisions, major decisions. Wow! When we're confused, the Lord leads us. The Lord guides us. Hallelujah! That's the work of the shepherd. He guides us. At the same time, He corrects us. Any problem that comes along, He corrects. We thank God for our great shepherd. Sometimes we took our own ways, took the wrong turn, but we thank God because the Lord is a shepherd. He guides us, He corrects us. We made a lot of mistakes. Amen? We made a lot of, we made a lot of our decisions. We failed many times, but because we made the Lord our shepherd, He provides. He protects, He guides, He corrects. Just imagine God has promised to do these four things in your life if you trust Him. How many wants provisions? Amen. How many wants protections? Amen. How many wants corrections? Amen. We need God's corrections. We thought, every, we thought that everything is right. But without God's correction, we're going to end in danger. But we thank God, God is always there to guide us, to protect us, to provide for everything. God has promised to do these four things in your life. If you trust Him, if you let Him be your shepherd. He says, I'll be your shepherd. I will provide for you. That's the promise of God. Who wants provision? Who wants protections? Who wants guidance? You want correction? Only to those who make the Lord. The, the question is, is the Lord our shepherd? If you want to experience protection, if you want to experience provisions, if you want to experience guidance, corrections, then the Bible says, let's apply the principle of the Word of God. And that is to make the Lord your shepherd. And Isaiah 40 verse 11 says, 
to those who make the Lord. He says here, God takes care of His people like a shepherd. God will prove Himself that He can provide. Amen? God will prove Himself that He can protect you. He can guide you. He could supply everything. That's what Paul said in Philippians 4 9. It says, My God will meet all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Paul claimed that God is His shepherd. That's why God for Himself that God can supply all His needs. The same thing with us. He says, My God will meet all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. This verse doesn't say, God will meet all your wants. That's not the promise of the scripture. The scripture says, God will meet all your needs. Not all your wants. There's a big difference. There's a difference between needs and wants. One time we went yesterday with my son Iman. We went to liquidation somewhere in uh, near the place of uh, Brother Nards. You know the place of liquidation area? Yeah. We went there. And then we just uh, bought some stock for uh, DVBS. And then my son Iman with his brother Alma, they went to a toy stage, toy uh, section. I was looking around and they said, Hey, Pa, I, I want this, uh, this toy. That's the word he, he, he uttered to me. I, need, I want this toy. And then he hold my hands and then he brought me there and said, Hey, God. I want this, this, this toy. I want this toy. And I said, oh. I tried to explain to him, no, I, you don't need that because you have a lot of, you have a lot of toys now in the house. You don't need this one. Try to explain to him, but he said, he kept on uh, insisting, I, I want this toy. I want this toy. And I tried to explain to him, no, my son, you have a lot of toys, I think you don't need that. I tried to explain to him. I tried to explain between want and the needs. I said, and then he realized, I was, you have a lot of stuff, you have a lot of toys. You don't need this one. For now, I thought it. But remember that he said, 20 is my birthday. That's, that's your gift to me, he said to me. <laughs> because this coming 20 is his birthday. And he, he, he said, remember that, that stuff. Remember that box of toys. He said, I need that Lord. I need that God. I said, okay, you need that? You ask the Lord to pray for that. I told him, just pray for that stuff. I said, Lord, I need this one. But I always, I tried to explain to him, you don't, uh, I said, you don't want this. Uh, I said, that. because sometimes people, when you try to give everything, you know, this, it would be a, become a, you know, spoiled brand. Everything is, you see, I want this one. I need this one. I need this one. You know, sometimes the Lord will not give everything we want. Why? Because if God meant all He wants, it would be the biggest flaw in the world. Even in our kids. We don't want to give everything they want. Because they're going to raise up a spoiled brat son, spoiled brat daughter. We don't want to do. We don't want to give everything they want. We just give what they need. The same thing with the Lord. Amen? God will not give what you want. You can say, Lord, I need this. I want this one. I want this one. I want this Lord. I want that one. I want this one. God will not give what you want. God will give what you want. That's why the Bible says, My God will meet all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. I will meet all your needs. That's the promise of God. To those who to make the Lord their shepherd. It says, God says, I will. It doesn't say, I might, or I think about it first. God made a promise. I will meet all your needs. All means all. What is your need today? Not your wants. What is our need today? God made a promise that God will meet all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Meaning to say, God made a promise and His name is at stake. His character is on the line. That's why the moment God is I will meet all your needs. God's character is on the line. His name is at stake. Then God will prove Himself that He can meet To his riches and glory. <coughs> I will meet all, all means all. What is your need today? What is our need today? All include the 
our financial needs, health needs, relational needs, just everything. What is your need today? And the Lord is reminding us, the Lord is reminding me, what is my need? What is your need? I can meet all of your needs today. What is your need today? Spiritual needs, you have, you have, a, you have, you have a spiritual need, financial needs, maybe your help, you need the touch of the Lord, maybe there's some problem, that, you know, relational. There's some problems, in, you know, people are, have problems with their relationship. Just, just tonight I have to talk to one of them. Because they have some problems with their, their, their situation. Relational needs. We need the Lord. That's why we need the Lord. Amen. We need the help. We need the touch of the Lord. We need God. And the good thing is, God can meet. God can supply. <coughs> God has a solution for every Amen. need. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why I'm so thankful to the Lord. When we make the Lord our shepherd, God will prove Himself that He can provide. He can protect. He can guide. He can correct us. He can sustain us. Hallelujah. Knowing that God. Consider 
The process is acknowledge Jesus as my Lord. How many wants the Lord to be your shepherd? Amen. The first thing that we have to do is let us remember that God is not the shepherd of everybody. Maybe you're attending this church for quite so long. That God is not the shepherd of everybody. He's only the shepherd of those who let him be the shepherd. That's why I ask you this question. Is the Lord your shepherd? It says, the Lord, look at how, how David declared, the Lord is my shepherd. You're going to tell your, your children can say, oh, my dad is, my dad is, uh, dad is his shepherd. Therefore, I'm part of that. Hey guys, look at what David said, the Lord is mine. It's a personal, it's an intimate relationship that you need to acknowledge. Make the Lord your shepherd. You can tell my husband, he recognizes, he acknowledges the Lord as his shepherd. Therefore, I'm one of that. No. You have to make a decision. You have to acknowledge that you need the Lord as your shepherd. Can you say that to that? Amen. That's a process. Because not everyone here, the Lord is their shepherd. If you want to experience God as a shepherd who can provide, who can protect, who can guide, who can correct, that's the first thing that we have to consider. Make the Lord your shepherd. Acknowledge Jesus as mine, as my Lord, as my Lord. Guys, the Lord cannot be your shepherd until the shepherd is your Lord. Hello? Never! The Lord cannot be your shepherd until the shepherd is your Lord. The two go together. You can say, well, the Lord is, I want him to be my shepherd. But I don't want him to be the Lord. I just want provision. I just need protection. I just want correction. I want this guidance, but I don't want him to be the Lord. Can it be? If you want God to be your shepherd, His protection, His provisions, His guidance, His correction, the Bible says, acknowledge Jesus as your Lord. You can never, you can never be, a, you can never experience as your shepherd unless you allow Him to be the Lord of your life. You cannot ask Him to be the shepherd without allowing Him to be your Lord. Many people, they just want God to be their shepherd. But they don't want to him. They don't want them to be the Lord. The two words, the two characters, goes together. The two go together. Make the Lord the shepherd. But that's meant to be the Lord. You know, to make him the Lord, it means to be in control. Amen? In our, in our context, if you're working in a company, you make him the boss. A CEO. The one who's calling the shots. You know, in the big company, the CEO, that's the word, Lord. What does the Lord? It means to be controlled. Means whoever is in charge, under control, who's on top, and in control of every situation. It's Jesus, the Lord. Christ is not the Lord of all, if He's not the Lord at all. How many wants the Lord to be a shepherd? Amen. Let us make our shepherd the Lord. That's why the first process that we, the first thing we have to consider is to acknowledge Jesus as my Lord. I like to acknowledge Jesus as my Lord. Acknowledge Jesus as your Lord as well. As an individual, as a family, try to inculcate in the minds and the heart of your children. Make the Lord, make Jesus their Lord. Because the moment they acknowledge, the moment they recognize that Jesus
Jesus as the Lord of their life, of their life, may tell you, God will prove it to them, Mr. Shepherd. Amen? Who can supply everything? Hallelujah! And if it's not your Lord God, He's not your shepherd. He cannot. God will, prove him, God will never prove Himself as He is your shepherd unless you allow Him to be the Lord of your life. May the Lord your shepherd. I like to read John 10. It says, Jesus said in John 10, verse 14 to 7, He said, Now the word Lord here means three things. I am the good shepherd, says, My sheep knows me. Take note of the word knows me. They listen to my voice. And they follow me. Making him the Lord is to know him. First is the first thing. If you want him to be the Lord, know the Lord. Make him your personal Lord. And those who want God to be the Lord of their life, they're willing to listen. People, they just want to know God, but they don't want to listen. Maybe some of them, they are listening. But they don't want to follow what God is telling them to do. If you want Him to be the Lord, make Him a personal Lord. Make a decision, Lord, I want to know You to be my Lord. But at the same time, if you want Him to be the Lord and experience Him as to be the shepherd of your life, you are, you are willing to listen to what He's telling you, what He's trying to say to you. Upon listening, this instruction, this word, then you're willing to follow. Say, yes, Lord. I want to follow you. I want to obey you. I want to listen to you. You can never make him the Lord and experience his being a shepherd if you're not willing to listen and obey his instruction. Maybe the Lord is giving us an instruction. But we don't want to listen to him. But we say, Lord, I want you to be the Lord. To know Him is one thing. To listen and to obey is another. That we have to consider. How many wants the Lord to be a shepherd? Yes. Know Him. Listen to Him. You know, every day, God wants to speak to us. I said that God can speak to us in an audible voice. Something that God can speak in an audible voice. But you know, God, you want, you, you, want, you want to hear from God? Simple, just go to the Word of God. And listen to His instruction. Every day God is giving us instruction. What to do? There's a lot of promises. And as you listen to the Word of God, obey and follow. And then continue control over your life. If you want to win over worry, you know, we can win over worry when we put the Lord as a shepherd. Hallelujah. Mm. How many wants to listen to God's voice today? Yeah. How many wants to obey? Yeah. How many wants God to be to be in your life? To be in total control. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why who's in control of your life? God give you the option. He doesn't force himself on anybody else. He made us in, and he knows what is best for us. But God, he can never force himself to anybody else. He wants the best for his people. He wants the best for his children. But God can never force himself to anybody else. God has given us the option to say, yes, Lord. Be my Lord. Be my shepherd, Lord. And take control of my life, Lord. That's why. Who's in control of your life today? God gives us the option. He doesn't for himself to anybody else. But we have to make a decision. Every day is a matter of decision. Whether I'm going to make him the Lord and be the shepherd, or I have been the Lord of my life. Or in control of my life. Guys, we can never control any situation. When we try to control every situation, we're prone to worry. But to those who make the Lord their shepherd, 
God will prove himself that he is their provider, protector, everything. Make the Lord your shepherd. Maybe some of you are running your own life without God's direction, you ought to be worried. But if God is running your life and it's your Lord and your shepherd, you know, knowing that He can control your situation, therefore, you should not worry. When we allow God to be in control, remember that's the Lord. Making Him the CEO or the boss is all He wants to do what, what's best for you. But the question is the Lord in control of every situation. I make a decision to make Jesus the Lord in my life. Because apart from the Lord, I can do nothing. Guys, make a personal commitment. Make a personal decision to make the Lord of your life. When we make Him the Lord, God is our shepherd and we will prove Himself. Remember the song, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's in control. He can do everything he wants if we allow him to be in control. How many wants that to control your life? Amen. Yeah. When we allow the Lord, he can take care of everything. The second thing that we have to consider, as acknowledge Jesus my Lord, at the same time, as God about everything. Look at Philippians 4, it says, Don't worry about anything, instead pray. Don't worry about anything, instead pray. Pray about all the stuff you usually worry about. Pour out your heart to the Lord. Talk to God. Ask God about everything. Everything means everything. When we ask God, God will definitely listen to our, to, to our cry. He will extend His loving arms and He will definitely answer us when we ask the Lord. How do you try to ask the Lord? Ask God about everything. Simple things, big things, anything. We can ask about God to extend help, to help us. If we need uh, help, ask God about everything. Everything is everything. Why don't we come to the Lord? He says, don't worry about anything. But ask God to pray. Why worry when we can ask the Lord to help us? Amen? Why worry when we can pray? That's why the Bible says, don't worry about anything instead pray. First Peter says, cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Cast, the word cast here means unload it. Let it go. To drop it. To unload it. That's the word cast. Unload it before the Let it go before the Lord. And sometimes we're like, you know, how many of you experience that doing some fishing? We cast, sometimes we cast our worries and we try to bring it back. Cast it. Unload it. And then bring it back. Bring it at the feet of the Lord Jesus. Say, Lord, yes, I'm facing all this stuff, but Lord, I want to cast all my anxiety because you care for me. Hallelujah. Let us bring it to the Lord. Everything. Bring it to the Lord. We don't have time to pray, but we sometimes, and many times, we have time to worry. But the Bible says, worry doesn't change anything. Remember, it will not help you, it will not solve problems. But prayer does. That's why we thank God. We, we have the kind of ministry now that we try to uh, bring about. We want to have a, a house of prayer for empowerment. We want to see the church, the ministry, every family really recognizing the presence of God to pour out their needs. Hallelujah. We need the Lord. Us, God about everything. Worry doesn't change anything. Worry doesn't help, but prayer does. Prayer can help us. Can change situation. Can change any problem. Can change person. When we call upon the name of God. But when you solve, when you worry, that's not helping. 
Why worry? We spend so much time on worrying. Why don't we spend time asking the Lord to help us? Kneel down in the presence of God and say, Lord, I cannot handle this anymore. I've been bombarded by the enemy in situation. But when you pray and ask God about everything, prayer does, prayer helps. It releases His power and open the heavens and prove himself that I am almighty and can extend and I can help you. That's about everything. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the Bible says to those who ask God, the response is the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart. If your heart is full of worry, God will eliminate that, that in your heart. He can remove that now. And fill your heart with peace that passes all understanding. Guys, allow God. Ask God about everything. Amen? That's a process. Acknowledge Jesus as my Lord. Ask God about everything. And then allow one day at a time. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew 6 24. So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow. Allow. Have you ever tried to bring all stuff, all your grocery bags, all together at once? Try to bring all those heavy bags all at once. It's heavy. And sometimes you, it, you know, it, 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 it will not help you. Bring up all, all heavy bags, all grocery bags at once. That's why the Lord is reminding us, allow one day at a time. You cannot carry all those bags. You can carry all those problems. One day at a time. Don't try to carry them all at once. Bring it to the Lord. Amen. Bring it to the Lord. One day at a time. What is my situation? All right, I just want to give it. Don't try to bring all.
make the Lord today. All of us here, we need the Lord. Let's confess before God, Lord. I want you to be my shepherd. Be my shepherd. But the first thing that we have to consider is the Lord in control over your life. Today, I would like to ask everyone, you want God to be your shepherd. Allow Him to be in control. Be the boss. CEO. Manager. Everything. The one who's calling you. Follow 